We talk about attitude. Changing our attitude is very essential. When we have a negative attitude, have a bad outlook, everything is going to work against you. That's why when you are having a happy outlook, you have better opportunity. When you have better opportunity, your strength is coming to you. You will find joy. The people around you also have a better outlook too. So be positive, ladies and gentlemen. We talk about patience. Yes, we talk about patience. Be patient with your job. Be patient with your finance. Be patient with your family. Be patient with your spouse, children, parents. Nothing is perfect. But when we are patient, we are able to overcome our obstacles. We understand the situation better. When we do, we can capture new opportunity with patience. And the next word is about passion. I tell you, 50% or even more people that lost their job in the last five, 10 years or changing jobs, they may say, this is not a job I like. This is not a job I want. I should earn more money. But you know what? Sometimes we have to be thankful to have a job. Learn how to love your job so that when you go into work, you find a purpose at work. You say, well, if I don't enjoy my job, how I can find passion? Remember one, one thing. You get paid for it. Okay, that's a great reason to be happy. It's better to have a job than no job. Even you have two jobs, pay you little money. But a lot of people still have no jobs. So love what you do. But if you don't have a job today, and you can find passion, you can be patient. And you still need the next letter, which is yes. Why? Yes. Believe in yourself. Try to work hard. Try to find a new job. Maybe it take you a week, maybe it take you a month, maybe it take you a year. But you never stop believing in yourself. You never stop believing in our system. You never stop in believing America. If that is what we have, that's where we live, we must believe in ourselves. Believe in our system. Believe in our country. Time is the best medicine when we believe in ourselves to conquer our obstacles, continue to have plans, and continue looking for jobs, continue to work hard. Yes, you can. And yes, we can. We all can improve ourselves. Uh, that's a simple, isn't it? The other thing that we want to talk about, the happy life, as you can see, is that L. Love is such an important thing in life. At one point or the other in our life, we have a lot of love. We still have a lot of love. We will have a lot of love. But sometimes we hide our love. Nobody feel it. Nobody know it, and nobody benefit all from it. Especially the parents in Asia, especially the fatherhood in China, India, and some Asian culture country. The father used to be the power and the main figure of a household. He had to keep himself a little distant from the family members so that he can show off his authority, his power, his strength. And a lot of time, they talk to their children like he is the teacher or professor. Oftentimes, they don't even touch the children because they want to earn the respect from the children. They don't want to play with them. But those are the old days. 
Nowadays, we understand body contact, shaking hands, kissing each other on the cheek, you know, and putting a hand on your children's head and you know, motivate them and thank them and, and, and be close with them. Those are the good things. And I admire this Western culture. We are much more open to our family and friends. So that we need to learn how to love. We need how to learn how to share our love in a positive way. I talked about that last week. A brother and a sister, they love each other. But when a little sister fell off from her bite, the older brother may say, hey, you know, you deserved it. When we are parents, do you think that is a good thing to hear from our younger children? They may just playing. They may understand each other. But sometimes when the little girl really got hurt, she does not interpret it that way. When she just fell off and does it off and not, hurt, not feeling any pain, of course that was a joke. But when she was in pain, that is no longer a joke. That's bullying. That's something unfriendly comments to her. So, but the boy, he loved the sister. He does not mean to hurt her feelings. He wants to continue that close relationship. But because sometimes we are overlooking the situation, we allow that little small hard feelings and let it grow to a misunderstanding, miscommunication, and even develop to a bad relationship in their lifetime. Sometimes those small little things, we did not know where it came from, and the brothers and sisters, they don't get along with each other, we, does not get along with each other, don't know why. Subconsciously they know, but actually they don't. They, don't, they were not able to pinpoint the root of the problem among those brothers and sisters. So learn how to share our love and understand our loved ones. And let me tell you a story about love. My father-in-law hit a stroke at the age of 50. 15 years later, he was able to use his right arm and walk with a can. Midnight, three o'clock in the morning, he was cooking a midnight meal for himself. The banking, the cooking, woke everybody up in the household. I went and talked to my father-in-law. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm cooking my meal. I said, this is midnight. You already had your dinner. He said, oh no, I'm hungry. I want to cook my dinner. So I took him to the front door, opened the door, said, look at the window, look outside. It's dark, it's three o'clock. You know, it's, it's bedtime, it's not cooking time. And he thought that I didn't love him. He fought me. And I yelled back. That's the first time I argued with my father-in-law, for first time in 15 years. I much regret it later. I yell at him, of course I love you. You must be crazy. He said something inappropriate. Because I really love him. I care for him. So at the end, I fixed some breakfast, like, you know, banana, milk, and things like that for him to eat. And he went upstairs and had a nice sleep, I guess, because I didn't see him until maybe 11, 12 o'clock next day when I call him up. But a couple of days later, I found him staying in a bathtub and banging the wall. And I said, what are you doing? Midnight, 12 o'clock. He said, I was playing Kung Fu. Really? 12 o'clock at midnight playing Kung Fu inside the bathtub, fully closed? And I thought there was something wrong. So I took him to the doctor the next day. And indeed, they discovered that he had autonomous disease. Sometimes, but not knowing our loved ones about their situation, 
We hurt their feelings, and not only that, we make mistakes ourselves by yelling at my father-in-law, and I was so regret of that situation. So, ladies and gentlemen, just try to understand your loved ones so that you can share your love appropriately, and tell them you love them. Share it openly, unconditionally. Continue to improve. You know, after I had my cancer surgery a few years ago, you know, once I get off from the bed, I say, I want to improve one step each time, one percent each day. You know what? Three, four days later, I was able to run down the hallway. Yes, just improve one little bit each time, each day. You find a lot of happiness. So improvement is important. And now I'm talking about fairness. Tell you, a lot of things will happen to me I felt was unfair. I felt you feel the same way too. A lot of things happened in your life you felt was unfair. But we must understand, we all feel life is unfair. When you understand fairness, you're able to forgive other people easier and make your life feeling better. That's one good way to find happiness. Forgive and forget. Because when you forgive and forget, not only that you feel happier, the people around you, your family, they also feel happier and you raise them up. You don't push them down. When you feel unhappy, everybody around you felt the same way like you do. So try to live up. Life may not be fair to you, but you must be fair in life. At the age of 60, I began my first job. I started my business when I was 17. I was a business owner for 43 years. But I, after I retired from my business earlier this year in March, now I have to start a new life at the age of 60. I learn new skills. I learn how to make a living. I learn how to begin my new journey in life at the age of 60. So I came up with a slogan, life start at the age of 60, again to achieve our second dream and our better goals. Never stop learning and never stop teaching. I want to share my experiences with you so that you can live a happy life. It's very simple, learning and teaching. When you are educating other people or learning from the teachers, how can you be unhappy? It's easy to live a happy life. Don't let time and money burn your soul and burn your mind and burn your soul. Allow yourself some time, relax yourself, find happiness regardless of the situation, either with helping people, have a positive attitude, be patient, find passion, making phone call, look at the beautiful skies, go to the beaches, you know, and, and, and look at the forest, glaze over, listen to birds singing, find something you love to do, you find happiness. When you believe in yourself, you are empowering yourself, you find happiness. Share your love, ladies and gentlemen. Improve. Continue to improve. Bad health, try to find a way to get better health. Stop smoking or do whatever you need to do. As long as you are able to find a balance in life, you find happiness. It's as simple as that. Improve, understand fairness, continue to learn, continue to educate. I wish you will be able to live a very, very happy life for many, many years to come. Yes, this book is not a roadmap, not even a GPS. But you know what? I wrote this book, Happy Life. It helped me. When I first wrote the book, I was you know, thinking about helping other people. After I you know, spoke to a group of students, five different classes in Hinrico High School, and I was trying to encourage the students. I was here to ask you to continue education after high school because I want you to live a happy life. And I came up with the acronym, H-A-P-P-Y-L-I-F-E. And after I wrote it, many people read my book and thought my book is able to change their perspective and change their lives. And during 
the hard times that I was facing, I read my own book and I found it was help, also helpful. So, you may or may not need a happy life book to guide you. All you need to do is start it from your, within you, from your own heart and your own mind. If someone can exercise and find a healthier life, you can spend some time and readjust and find a balance in life so that you can live a happier life as well. I want to thank you so much for listening and thank you for spending the whole beautiful hour with me. And I wish you a very happy life and have a quick night. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. 